Rise and shine, campers. It's time to get up and go to work. And I can't wait because today we're talking about polynomials. What they are, why we call them that, how we describe or classify them, and how we add and subtract them. We're going to get around to multiplying and dividing them too, but we'll save that till later. For now, let's get smarter. So if we're talking about polynomials as a mathematics unit, then we're talking about taking something like a polynomial and adding or subtracting or multiplying or even dividing this polynomial against another one. So that's basic operations, but we're also talking about recognizing what this polynomial is and how it behaves, and we're talking about being able to manipulate it to behave the way we want it to. Let's talk about what a polynomial is. Poly, the prefix, just means many, and nomial comes from the word name. Uh, so it's not really very descriptive, but what it means is a mathematics expression with many terms. Now, if a polynomial is a, an expression with many terms, then we need to limit it down to what would it be if we didn't have many terms. If you just have one term, then we call that a monomial. And if you have two terms, then we call that a binomial. But now we're getting into classifying different kinds of mathematical expressions. So it's a good time for us to go to the notes. We are classifying or defining what polynomials are, what makes them different from each other. So what is it that makes a polynomial different from another one? When you classify something, what you're doing is you're describing it by various uh, features or facets that people find important, like number of legs or hair color or eye color or basically anything that you think is important about whatever it is you're describing. What we're describing is a mathematical expression. So there are really three things that are important about it that we can use to classify or describe it. The first would be its degree. Now the easy definition for a degree is it's the highest exponent that you see, but it's a little complicated when we're talking about expressions that have more than one variable. And the easiest way to see that is to look at this monomial that has both an X and a Y in it. We're looking at one term, and we see that the highest degree is two, but because there are two variables, we really have to take the number of variables all together. So the fact that there is an x squared and also a y to the one, for this particular term, there's a total of three variables that we see. And so the degree of this monomial is three. But that's the only time we have to add anything together. When we're talking about polynomials, what we do is we take the term in the polynomial that has the highest degree, and that degree is the degree of the polynomial. The question then, of course, is why does it matter? Well, the degree ultimately determines what shape this polynomial is going to take on the graph, how it's going to behave as you amend or change its input value. We'll see some examples here in a little bit. The next thing we're going to care about on a polynomial is its coefficients, specifically its leading coefficient. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the polynomial and see what the biggest degree term is, and then we're going to look at the number that's in front of that term, its coefficient, specifically its leading coefficient. That number, the leading coefficient, determines how steep this polynomial is ultimately going to be once it takes on its characteristic shape. But it also does one other thing. If that leading coefficient is positive, then that function is going to be in the positive direction going up. But if that coefficient is negative, then that polynomial is going to be going down as you see it on a graph. And the last value we use to classify polynomials is how many terms that it has. Poly just means many, but sometimes it matters for us to know how many terms you would see. At the bottom of the notes, you'll see that we've come up with some special names for these different classifications of polynomials, just so when we're speaking to each other, we're speaking the same language. A polynomial whose degree is 1, meaning it only has an x, or whatever its variable is, and doesn't have an exponent on it, or that exponent is 1, is called a linear, and it'll just draw a straight line. A polynomial whose highest degree is 2 is called a quadratic, and it draws that very characteristic quadratic U shape, a parabola. A polynomial whose highest degree is 3 is often referred to as a cubic, and it draws a curvy shape, only this time it goes opposite directions on opposite ends of the graph. Once your degree gets above third, there are names. Fourth degree is called quartic, fifth degree is called quintic, and the only place you will ever see those names is inside a math classroom. Nobody besides math teachers ever, ever uses the word quartic 
or quintic. The other special words that we've come up with for polynomials describe how many terms there are in the polynomial. No matter what the degree is, a monomial has one term. A binomial has two terms. A trinomial has three terms. And like before, those are the most common, and so we don't bother with names for the higher ones. If you have a polynomial with four terms, we call it a polynomial with four terms. So let's look at some examples from a worksheet that I put together on this. Here on number one, you see it says x to the eighth. It's the only term there, it's the only variable there. We're looking for the degree, and the degree on this one would be eight, because that's the exponent that's above the eight. But if you look at number two, you see that it has two variables in it. It's a monomial, and it's a little bit more confusing in that case. 6x cubed times y, well, it has an x variable and it has a y variable in it, and that y is to the power of 1, even though we didn't bother to write it. The degree is the number of variables inside the largest variable term or the largest degree term. So since this one contains x cubed and it contains y to the 1, the degree on number 2 is going to be 4. Next, looking at the special case that is problem number 3, the term that we're looking at here is a constant term. It's 8. There's nothing special about that number 8. But if we're considering it a term in a polynomial, or in this case a monomial, then there is a variable there. It's just that it's a variable that doesn't have any effect. Technically, it's x to the 0. And therefore, because it doesn't have any exponent on a variable, its degree is 0. But let's get to the more common kind of problem you would see in this case. Number 5 is a trinomial. And it's a trinomial whose largest exponent is 5. Or at least, the term with the largest exponent has an exponent of 5. And therefore, the degree on problem number 5 is 5. The fact that there's another term that has a degree of 3 is immaterial. You're looking at the term with the largest exponent. That defines the degree of the polynomial. So I think now that we better understand degree, we're ready to just go ahead and classify a polynomial altogether. Let's jump ahead to problem number 13. Here we see a polynomial that has four separate terms, and we want to go ahead and classify it as what kind of polynomial it is. Here's our first challenge. It's not written in standard form. For a polynomial to be in standard form, there are two requirements. The first is that all of the like terms have already been combined together. And the second is that the exponents, or the degree of each term, have to go down from one term to the next. In this example on number 13, every term has its own degree, but the largest degree term is not the first term that's there. So the first thing we have to do is we have to rewrite this polynomial so that the largest degree term is first, and the degrees go down in each term from there. Now that the terms are in the right order, it's easy for us to see the leading coefficient. It's the number in front of the term with the largest exponent, and in this case, that's 2. Also, now that it's in standard form, it is easier for us to pull out the degree, the largest exponent that's in the polynomial, which in this case is 4. The number of terms is the easiest thing to find here. How many different things are being added or subtracted? Again, in this case, it's 4. And then finally, we're going to name it. We're going to classify it. We'll do that by naming its degree and then its number of terms, using the special words if we have them available. Since this one is a fourth degree polynomial, we could call it quartic, although just about everybody would just call it a fourth degree polynomial. And because it has four terms, we don't have a special word for that either. This one is a fourth degree polynomial, or a quartic polynomial if you're in a math classroom. That next one, with only three terms, that would be a trinomial. But tell me what kind of degree it would be. Now that we have the vocabulary and we've classified or described our polynomials, we're ready to do the first things with them, which is to add them and subtract them. And the thing to keep in mind here is that you can only add or subtract like terms. Ones that have the same variable and exponent on that variable. So when you see a couple of polynomials put together and a plus sign between them, you are literally just combining like terms. Like in this case on problem number 19, where there's a 6x squared and an 8x squared, we're going to combine those together. There'll still be an x squared term, but with 6 of them and 8 of them, we have a total of 14x squared. We combine the other like terms to find what the final answer of this polynomial addition is. The thing to watch out for is subtraction, like here on problem number 21. The particular problem is that if you're subtracting a polynomial, you're subtracting the whole thing. 
it's minus everything that's in the parentheses. And as a result, what we should do before we do anything else is distribute that minus into the parentheses. So in this problem, we'll take the negative and distribute it in. The 3x will become negative 3x. The x cubed will become negative x cubed. And the negative 4 will become positive 4. Now that we've distributed the minus in, we're ready to combine like terms just like we did before. With the vocabulary in our minds and the ability to add and subtract these polynomials, we're well on our way. Next, we'll figure out how we multiply these together, which will take a little bit longer.